There are several good ways to make alcohols, so using them in organic synthesis as intermediates to make other compounds, for example, through substitution, uh, is very attractive. At the same time, speaking of substitution, the OH group is such a bad leaving group, it just doesn't get displaced using normal SN substitution conditions. What I'm saying is this OH group does not function as a leaving group. Whether we're talking about SN1 or SN2, the loss of hydroxide as a leaving group doesn't happen because hydroxide isn't stable enough. But we can change all that if we're talking about water as a leaving group, a neutral leaving group, one that doesn't have a negative charge. Water is so stable, it actually can just depart with a pair of electrons to take care of that positive charge on oxygen. It becomes a stable neutral molecule. And now we've made a carbocation in an SN1 reaction. This happens. So neutral leaving groups are really useful. They can turn alcohols into compounds that are reactive enough to participate in nucleophilic substitution reactions, both SN1 and SN2. Well, how does that happen? Simply use an acid, and what we'll see is that in the presence of an acid, of an equilibrium protonation, acid-base reaction, oxygen has two lone pairs of electrons. I'll put one in so we can show that pair bonding to the proton. And now we've got a good leaving group. What would this acid be? Well, the common candidates for the chemistry we'll see are HCl, HBr, and H2SO4. Both of these create good nucleophiles during the protonation process. So this conjugate base will then participate in an SN1 or SN2 reaction to make a new molecule. When sulfuric acid is the acid, the bisulfate that's formed is a poor nucleophile. And so something else happens, including reaction of this protonated alcohol with another molecule of alcohol. We'll get to that later when we talk about the chemistry of alcohols. For now, the point is that a very poor leaving group, the OH of an alcohol, can be transformed into a very good leaving group, the protonated OH of an alcohol, which then undergoes SN1 or SN2 chemistry. In terms of the energy diagrams, then, take a look. The normal SN2 reaction looks like this. If an alcohol is a starting material that's protonated by acid, we have another step to begin with. So we have an alcohol, we have a protonated alcohol, and we have a product. For the SN1 reaction, there's an intermediate formed. If an alcohol is a substrate, there are two intermediates formed. So the use of acid with alcohols adds a step, an early protonation of the alcohol to turn it into a good leaving group, and then the chemistry proceeds as normal. The SN1 and SN2 reactions involve reaction of a nucleophile, either with a carbocation or with a neutral compound that has a leaving group. So in the one case, we're talking about a nucleophile donating a pair of electrons to a carbocation. In the other, we're talking about a nucleophile actually displacing the leaving group directly. But in either case, I've typically indicated that these are negatively charged nucleophiles. So the product in each case is neutral. This carbon, of course, has other things attached to it. The product here we could write as a nucleophile. We know, of course, that it could be in antimers that we're forming. This doesn't have to be a negatively charged nucleophile. Examples of neutral nucleophiles include water, alcohols, and amines, compounds that have a NH bond. In every case, the nucleophile has a proton attached to a heteroatom. In each of these cases, the substitution reaction isn't complete until there's been a proton transfer at the end to form the final product. Take a look. Well, what we're saying is the nucleophile has a proton attached in addition to a pair of electrons. And when that nucleophile adds, the product that is formed has a nucleophile proton, and positive charge. And in a final step, which is an equilibrium, some base that has a pair of electrons to share with a proton, removes the proton. Those electrons stay with the nucleophile, which is then neutral. 
And the same thing would be doing it to an SN2 reaction. So what I'm saying is that neutral nucleophiles are common in organic chemistry when they have a proton attached to a heteroatom. And after the nucleophile has added to the carbon, a proton is lost in a final step with base abstracting the proton. And to look at the energy diagrams, for the SN1 reaction, there's an ionization step to make a carbocation. The nucleophile adds to make a product which is protonated, and the proton leaves to make the final product. So the initial product when the nucleophile adds is a nucleophile with a hydrogen attached, and that will have a positive charge. And ultimately the proton is lost, and then we have a product with the nucleophile. It's neutral. So the energy profile for this SN1 reaction has three humps, not two. The ionization, the addition of the nucleophile, and then ultimately loss of proton. And for the SN2 reaction, what do you predict? Well, we're going to start someplace and have the substitution reaction where the nucleophile adds, but it will have a proton attached, and we will only get product once that proton is gone. So we have the carbon with the leaving group. We have the carbon with the nucleophile attached. It has a hydrogen on it. So now there's a positive charge. Then ultimately we have product with the nucleophile attached. So bottom line is, when we have a neutral nucleophile, it will almost certainly be a compound that has a hydrogen attached to a heteroatom. That nucleophile will add. It makes a protonated product, a positive charge. The final step is loss of proton to make product. There's an additional step in the process. There's an additional hump in the energy diagram.